All right, it's uh, it's 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 summertime. There, there ain't there ain't a better way to put it. It's uh, I mean, it's the dead of winter. Well, almost for us northern hemisphere folks, but we're joined by an Australian. Where it's the uh, it's the southern hemisphere, and it is summer. Everything's getting really warm. How's summer going, Magus? I hate it so much. <laughs> Bring me back to winter. I'm, I miss being able to snug up in my jumper and my blankets and like it was it was heaven. Yeah, it's uh, it's been pretty yeah. rough, hasn't it, Draco? Winter. I hate winter. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> let's get this show on the road. Let's go down the list. Who we got here? We got our boy Austin. Where has the podcast started? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh heck. Okay. Uh. Uh, hey. Awesome, please. Hey. Hi. We have, <laughs> uh, Corrupted. Strong start, Austin. Also, still alive. For now. Draco. Hello. Rio. Hello. I've been told I'm the Chinese Draco. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who said that. Whoever they are, they're probably <laughs> pretty racist. What's up, Magus? How are the emus? Uh, they're awful. I'm just... Trying to fend them off with a big stick right now, so if I disappear for any reason, that's why. Maybe it'll wall. work. I mean, I know guns certainly can beat them. Mm 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 mm. Got to be a big stick with a lot of duct tape. That's how you beat them. And lastly, we have our lad Tidu, who is sober this time around. Hey, yeah, correct. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, so I'm just gonna put myself on the record, just as I told you all earlier. When I first played Summer, I didn't think it was that great. Uh, I didn't really form any sort of attachment with it. So I'm going to be depending on you guys to help me push this thing through. Make this a fantastic podcast. Who's with me? Fuck yeah! Yes! Woo. It's going to be fun. Woo. I certainly hope it'll be fun. All right. Well, I guess we'll just we'll start out with Kana herself. Uh, actually, no. A better place to start is... Uh... <laughs> good, good. Uh-huh, yes. So, as soon as this starts, we find out that it's, what, a thousand years before the Mises are out? Wow. Hell yeah! Yeah, so who all... I don't want to say it like who all saw this coming, but... I did. Like, yeah, we know. It's it's literally on record on the podcast. <laughs> fucking <I'm> asshole. <laughs> but... I guess, uh, what did we think about that time change? Is it what we expected? How did we like it? I actually saw it coming because you changed the name of everything to something old-timey. A way to just call me out and throw me under the bus. Yeah, I know you spoiled... <laughs> Fe- uh, I always said Felix. Really, you spoiled everything. How dare you? You spoiled summer for us. You ruined the podcast. How dare you? I didn't say that. Look, honestly, what? I, uh... What? <laughs> I love this. Look, really, I loved the change. I would read an entire key novel set in feudal Japan because I think that the change in setting is really cool. Get your high schools and your seaside peaceful towns, get them out of here. Give me samurai and like tricking through the woods and and priests and like shrine maidens and beings. This is awesome. Misty forest, unexplained magic. It was a really cool environment. Monks and like weird mirrors. Look, I love. Uh, this is my jam. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, Draco. Feel. Since I know it's low key, making you like twitch in disgust every time. <laughs> would you like to tell us technically what period this takes part in? It's uh, it's called the Heian period, which isn't oh. yet it isn't feudal Japan yet. It's classical Japan still. So it's before feudal there. Japan. Yeah. All right. Thanks. It's Shut up, nerd. A <laughs> hundred years or so before fe- feudal Japan. So I mean, then, that's basically the same same time period. So then, we do have samurai. What? So Kano? You said Kano's that flashback in Kano's route was that before or after summer? Mm, about 300, G- 300 years after summer. All right, so that was feudal Japan. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that that raises some questions as to the last B, but that's all right. We'll get to that, I'm sure. All right, well, uh, then now we can talk about Kana herself. Now, see, my whole thing is, I thought she was all right, um, but 
The common consensus I've seen among key fans just across the internet as well as in this group is that Kana is a treasure. So I suppose I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to you guys to tell me about Kana and how you feel about her. So yeah, uh, th this is a little over-exaggerating it, but Kana and as an extension the summer route saved air for me. Because how I've been playing it up to now, at least... Hmm, well, okay, so I never enjoyed Kano route. Kano herself was... Bleh. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to like Minagi. I ended up not liking Minagi so much, and I was pretty much forcing myself through her route until it got good. Uh, Misuzu route was a disappointment and annoying, and I spent the whole route being like, okay, I, I didn't like the other characters, come on, Mis Misuzu, pull through, and she didn't. That hurts and me to then, hear. I know. And then I start summer, and I immediately love the atmosphere, love the writing, and I love Kana. And those feelings only grew stronger as I kept reading. So, for now, summer is the absolute high point of air for me. Our former members would agree with you. May their I souls that... rest in peace. <laughs> I was about to say. I think that's probably uh, a general consensus uh, among all of us. Oh, am I wrong? Is there anyone uh, that didn't uh, see Summer as the high point? I mean, but you mean besides Not me? Really. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought Minagi yeah. and the air route are the high points. Air, air route doesn't count yet. But mm, I guess we'll Minagi is the point. I thought her personality was pretty standard, like, I don't know anything uh, noble girl, although I became sympathetic for it once I realized she was imprisoned. But, um, I did get feels because of the whole, like, knight-serving princess deal. That was, that was a pretty nice connection they had. A, a cute, a little, fun, naive princess girl? Perfect. Well, uh, I, I'm more on Rini's side on this one. I thought it was a nice summer, it was a nice of, nice breath of fresh air, I think. Uh, going back to the past, uh, in terms of uh, whether it was better, um, it, I think it was right about the same, I mean, breath of fresh air. Um, nice that we got to know the backstory, but not necessarily that much better than the other routes. Kana itself, I am indifferent about. I prefer uh, Uraha and uh, Ryuya more as characters. Um, uh, yeah, that's about it. So, the general consensus is Kana is pretty cool, and so is the summer route. As, that, that's yeah, so kind of what I expected. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's my view? I, I mean, I already sort of summarized it. I, I thought Connell oh, was alright. Oh, my beef? No, I don't really have a beef. It just didn't It didn't captivate me as much as the others. Um, I, I just... I didn't particularly dislike it. I just think... Ah, okay. You know, that I guess that type of atmosphere wasn't for me. I, I think the summer route of air was one of the first routes where I started feeling like I do now, where it was like, hey, <laughs> if this doesn't pick up, I am not going to have a fun time. Because I remember thinking summer took a while to get going. I didn't really get truly into summer until the mountain path section where they're escaping and they're being pursued. Because everything before that, I just, I, I couldn't care less. Took a long time. So, uh, to touch on the atmosphere, um, I think the atmosphere of summer is why I liked it so much. Um, while the atmosphere of like the main game itself is very well done, I low-key hated it. And I think that's really just because of my personal life. See, I grew up uh, in Arizona, United States, which is in a desert, and I saw a lot of uh, hot and empty places, and I also hated living there. So. The air itself kind of just like brings me back to my childhood being in all these big, empty, hot places where I feel alone. But so, and when you think about that, 
then you'd say Summer did a really good job of immersing you. Yeah. So even though it reminded you of things you hated, it did a good job. <laughs> Wait, well, you mean the summer route or the rest of the game? Summer route. Well, I was referring to the rest of the game and oh. like the town that it's in. I mean, I didn't particularly dislike most of the rest of the game, but I feel uh, like the summer route in all its components was the mo most concise of all of them. Pacing was great, the characters worked well together. Um, I agree. The music fitted very much the setting. Uh, yeah, it fits the setting, but man, I, I don't like the summer music. It really, it really kind of bummed me out, just it because. Really could... Yeah, not. Yeah. See, I'm I a sucker that... for the slow, emotional piano tracks and stuff like that, and all of the music in summer just kind of, it kind of sounded the same to me almost. So I mean, like, it definitely sounded like the type of music that you would here in the thing like this but yeah it was not summer's music is one of the low points for me i feel like i should balance it out and be the one guy that says uh i liked all of it 100 percent the game before summer gave me this amazing chill vibe this feeling of infinity of just hanging out in this town that's so small everyone's kind to each other and then completely differently summer was like i was on the edge of my seat and feeling like they were doomed from the beginning, and I just was waiting to see how and why it was going to end. And the surprise, it ended as good as it did. Yeah, I mean, as positively as it did for the characters. Summer is a route, very quickly, it ventures into, trying to think of like what I would call it, it's like, like very classic adventure fiction. Like, the characters are given a quest, uh, and they are, you know, chased by an evil empire, and <laughs> like there's weird religious imagery and then it all ends tragically like it, it's it's very like uh it, it's it's very like ancient mythology slash classical fiction era like like japanese uh storytelling which i really enjoyed it's it very much stands in contrast to the kind of generic slice of life stuff that we get uh in the previous three routes um yeah, I don't know. I really enjoyed how he, uh, how they were able to write this story that is about family. It's about these three characters, you know, coming together and bonding and becoming a family uh, through this, like, very traditional method of storytelling, if that makes sense. Like, they're, they're weaving a very modern tale into a, a, a structurally traditional one. Um, like, I'm trying to think of like a good example in my mind, but just the way that it's presented, I think, is really interesting. Uh, and as I said earlier, I would really love to like read more key novels set in this period because it's so unique compared to their other works, which are all freaking high schools and like quiet in the middle of nowhere and whatnot um but the fact that so little of this route actually takes place in civilization comparatively i think is just really cool um it's kind of the survival story uh and a very different one to like where most modern uh you know drama stories would be a survival story cough cough uh angelic howl something something um yeah, I I really enjoyed the pacing of the whole thing. I don't think that it quite reached, you know, the pinnacle of storytelling for me. I wasn't, like, blown away by it by the end, but I enjoyed every moment of it. I don't think there was a scene where I was like, well, why is this scene here? Or, like, oh, this character's dumb, or I don't like this, this part. Um, I was always really excited to see how the, the quest would continue, um, what the name would be, you know? Okay. Um, yeah, I believe I had a good time. our man Draco has something to add to that. Yeah, one thing I noticed when I started Summer is that um, even though it's a uh, route unlocked after all the others, and obvi obviously it ties into the main narrative, it, it's the starting point of the main narrative. I feel it it still 
holds up on its own as a route. And if something is, if someone gave me summer to play without making me play play air, I wouldn't realize it was a se um, sequel route to something. I would have just enjoyed it for what it was. So it feels very, very self-contained. Yeah, which is awesome. Hell yeah. yes. Yeah, all the way to the the, the beginning wind up and the action and the sad ending. It felt like a self-contained. Well, route and story, and the action scene. Is anyone else impressed by the the sword fighting action scenes? They were minimalistic, no. but very well described. Yeah, yeah, they did a really good job. Uh, but this is where this is where old Rennie plays devil's advocate again, and I didn't really like how self-contained Summer was, just because it's self-contained, but it's it's a bridge route. It bridges Misusu's route with the air route, and it provides the backstory necessary to bring context to some of Misuzu's route, as well as the air route, obviously. But it, it doesn't it doesn't bring anything home, if that makes sense. You know, I, I can't say after I read Summer that I, I learned any lessons or I found value in any sort of message. It just felt like a story. Which, again, would have been fine for me, because bridge stories are great, but it was just so self-contained that, for me, it just didn't didn't sit well. It didn't, it didn't flow. Like, that, of course, could just be me. You know, did any of you guys get sort of a, a message or a lesson or anything like that from someone? I mean, I feel like my tears have value. <laughs> nah, but I own... Uh... I would agree uh, with one thing you said that as a bridge, it's a bridge road. It doesn't really need to have a message. It just needs to be a bridge. The message can come in air. Oh yeah, no, I completely agree. I just think if it were to be like that, it would have been a lot stronger if it weren't so self-contained. If it had a lot well, more connections to Misuzu and Air that weren't purely contextual backstory. So, Rennie, I have a question for you then. Okay. How do you think it compares with the, the only other key bridge route, Moon? Mm. I would say Moon does a better job because it very clearly it references all of the heroin routes, and by the end of it, you have a semi bit of an idea of what needs to be done. Um, you, you usually have to piece most of it together yourself, but I feel like Moon did a lot better of a job of being the backstory bridge route because, you know, Summer effectively, because it's so self-contained and centered just on the curse, you can thank Summer route for the absolute meaninglessness of Minagi and Kano's routes. Whereas yes. you, you... You can't blame Moon for any sort of meaninglessness of the five heroin routes because they're not meaningless. You actually experience in Moon why they're relevant. But in the summer route, you know, it's you there's nothing that has to it can even be connected to Kano or Minagi. It's just all the story of the curse, which is exclusive to Misuzu's story. Yeah, it kind of feels like I would completely accept that um, whoever it was that wrote Summer Route uh, had already had it written up and had that backstory, and then like the writers for Minagi and Kano Route just took like some tiny elements from Summer and tried to try to relate to it, and abysmally failed. And the Kano author did so bad they fired him, <laughs> and then he never got to write anything ever again. <laughs> Rip, and then he died. It's actually quite sad. <laughs> Is that true? No, it's even. What's even more sad is that you literally died. can't. It's even more sad is that you basically can't find that dude because he has the same name as a famous boxer. <laughs> it, yeah, he he didn't die corrupted, but the author of Kano's route, if you look him up on VNDB, he has written exactly one thing ever, and that's the Kano route. It's for the greater good. Yeah, nothing before, nothing after, and I can't say I'm complaining. Can we thank Summer for that? <laughs> You're right, this changes everything. Summer is the best route for sparing future generations from that man's writing. Good, I'm glad you are on our side now. Hmm. What a complete change. 
Oh, All right, yeah, so, so uh, uh, if you don't mind me saying so, you guys mentioned the, uh, well, Corrupted more so, mentioned the, the, the sword fights and the action scenes, <laughs> and that's where we move on to the mountain oh. escape, which is where I got oh, captivated, God. because... They they wrote it really well. Like it, it they it was a very suspenseful escape. That's why I got captivated. I kept clicking. I kept reading because it's like, man, this is great. I want to know what happens next. Man, I'm I'm gonna talk about this scene w while trying to control my shit on my route to Rett syndrome. But this was a pretty good sword fight scene. I uh, I think it uh, did a good job of like if it, it felt choreographed without having any actual visuals. Which was really nice. It, uh, like every movement was properly described, and it was very easy to imagine this fight in your head. And that's what made it, uh, wow, there went my train of thought. <laughs> toot toot. All right, anyone else want to talk about, uh, their feelings on this scene then? Well, Austin gathers about himself. Swords. Swords are fun. It was well done. Like, it came out of nowhere. You know, action sequences in a key game like that. Unprecedented. Also, especially in the, in the scene where they 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 run in the in the woods, you can really see that Luya really knows what he's doing. And yeah, I think you can see a bit of his his personality. He really he knows how to how to fight, he has experience, and he's not naive like, like, um, Yukito? some other protect. yeah. That's why I caught up with my train. Okay, well, choo-choo us, buddy. So, yeah, I, this fight was kind of padded, like, it didn't need to happen, or at least for as long as it did, and I hate padded fight scenes, but this was just such a well-described fight that I didn't care. <laughs> <I've>... <laughs> no, Austin, and... you should read Uman Echo. You'll love it. <laughs> oh. oh <laughs> I, I will definitely enjoy dedicating the next year to that. Yeah, padded fight but scenes, I, ahoy. Damn right. I, I, feel Let's get like, I feel like we've really skipped around way too much. There's a lot we could have covered before this fight scene. I, I was talking about the escape through the woods. Were you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the escape from the shrine, I believe. Yeah. Oh yeah, we still did skip the shrine. I, uh, I mean, yeah. does anything happen at the shrine? Like, do yeah. you have anything to add? No, um, really? Uh, we uh, cool. never talked. Never talked about Uraha. We could talk about Kana and Ryuya's dynamic. Sure. Well, there you go. This we'll is where you guys help me lead the podcast. Go ahead. Fantastic work, guys. Hey, hey, shit. Yeah, talking. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, yeah, let, let me just add one thing uh, to the escape scene because I think we pretty much done with this and can still go back. Um, I was surprised how um, endure how much endurance the girls had uh, in general. Um, I don't know. As they, much endurance as the plot could give them. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, it was a, maybe a bit plot convenience there, but um, she, they pulled through pretty good. It's not like they gave up halfway. Would have been boring to just have a game over or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a question. I have a question with you guys. Did you guys enjoy the fact that this route was kinetic in nature, or would you have preferred choices during certain scenes that would let you see how they played out? Yeah, it was fine. Ah, it's nice. not that's important. It's fine for a bit short. Yeah, I've so, gotten to the point where I, I'm not really looking for choices in the ends. Even, yeah, the, there may be exceptions, but mm, the the most I can ask it is just that they let me choose the route I want, and I don't really need more choices. It's so like to, uh, it's like ape scenes. Either they do them well and it adds to it, or they do it crap and it takes away. So if it's not there, it's kind of like, phew. At least they weren't shitty choices. Yeah. So to touch on uh, the dynamic between Ryuya and Kana, uh, I 
I personally very much enjoyed it, but I just didn't buy it, if you know what I mean. Like, I like I like their interactions with each other, but I never I never felt like uh, Ryuya's like strong dedication to her was ever justified, especially since he was just one of many guards, and it's even said early on in the route that he has barely spent any time like actively watching her. Mm. I think what sets him apart from all the others is that from the start, uh, um, Ryuya sees Kanna as a, a normal girl instead of the winged winged woman they had to protect. But mm -hmm. yeah, I can see how their um, how their feelings uh, how their fi their feelings are formed isn't really ex expanded uh, expanded much upon. I think given their minimalistic interaction with other humans, like considering the fact that he's pro she's probably the only girl he's ever in contact with, ever, it's a different scenario in Summer than, say, in the rest of the game. But what about Uraha? Just, just throwing that Uraha. out there. Uh, Uraha's great. Yeah, well, but Uraha, I... Since uh, the very first moment I saw her, I thought she was up to something that we would get something about her past, or maybe that she was she wasn't who we thought hey, we thought she was. But in the end, she yeah, she was just herself. She didn't reveal herself to be some kind of spy or agent from from other sides. So. Yeah, I I liked I liked it. I like how she's she's very competent, but she 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 doesn't she isn't in a special position or or anything. Who else thought she was gonna be Kana's mom? What kind of adoptive mom? Yeah, it would have been a possibility. That never occurred to me. But, uh, but what Drake, Drake was saying, I think it was, or somebody. Um, I think all of her interestingness is explained by the fact that she's a natural hojutsu user. I actually liked it a little bit better when it was a mystery, I guess. Why is she such a ninja? Why is she so confident and wise or whatever? How does she know which way is the barrier? Because the plot cool. needs a character like that. But, if actually both her and the main character had this interesting moment of uh, omniscience. Because she's like, you're, you're, you're grudge? You're not, not grudges, good lord. Your, um, hunches are always correct. And then she has intuition. Your intuition's always correct. That was a fun little back and forth. He has intuition from surviving on the battlefield. She has hunches because she's a natural-born hojutsu user. I just thought I... she was like a ninja or something. She was very ninja-like. I mean, I don't have much... I um, don't, uh, do not know enough to explain it, but... Um, about Japanese culture and uh, the religions, but I think um, maybe some kind of uh, she has good karma or good chi or whatever um, that just makes her more talented in this stuff. She may not have proper training to actually use it very good, but she was uh, just in, uh, in, in with, with intuition being able to uh, get a few things done right. I said Jedi to me. Yeah, that's, that's a good comparison, I guess. Just uh, with a more Japanese, Japanese culture touch. I, myself, didn't ever find myself thinking that Uraha was related to Kana or anything like that. I totally bought her story right away that she was, you know, just Kana's guardian. However, what I will say is at first, I thought Uraha was a traitor. I didn't oh, trust her at first. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely, you know, believed that she was, you know, Kana's right-hand person, essentially. But yeah, I totally thought that, you know, when things were first starting to go down and Ryuya was talking to Uraha a lot, I was like, hmm, I don't trust her. She's got something up her sleeve. And I mean, she did, it's just... It was for Kana's sake and not her own. Yeah, I can see why you would think that. She's really... Mm, I wouldn't say 
yeah, she's really mysterious and we really don't know where she came from, what what she can do. So yeah, I think that's that's justified. I also like that she's voiced by the same voice actress as uh, Sanae-san from Clanad because <laughs> they're such starkly different characters. <laughs> like, seeing I was all gonna of ask what? I was gonna ask you why you called her Feudal Sanai Furukawa when she's <laughs> nothing like her. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's just the voice, but yeah, it's seeing all of the kinds of stuff Uraha was saying, you know, all of the badass stuff, all the edgy stuff, all the sexual stuff, and hearing it in Sanai Furukawa's voice was just... <laughs> it was a bit jarring sometimes until I got used to it, because... Let me think. So, I saved Little Busters for last when I first played through key stuff. Air came first, so... Oh, wow. Yeah, so I after... I was your first. No, no, I meant after Clanad. Clanad was my gotcha. first. And I... What it eventually made me decide to play the other key novels was when I heard Kaisaroku from the Air soundtrack. Just that simple little piano piece, and I was like, all right, that's it. I'm downloading literally everything else Key has ever done and playing it. And I picked Air first. I knew I wanted to save Little Busters for last because it, it was the... It was the other big one. Um, so I did Air first. So, yeah, I, I didn't really have any other experience with visual novels. I mean, you could essentially say Air was my second visual novel I ever played. And so hearing Sane Furukawa, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't dissociate the voices from the characters as easily as I can now that I'm more experienced. So it definitely did seem like Nagisa's mom was saying the stuff coming out of Uraha's mouth. It was. I did. Did you watch uh, the Clanad anime first? I did. Yes, my, ah, intru my introduction to just culture like this in general came from the Clanad anime because I had, oh. you know, the same phase, quote unquote, as so many other adolescent kids, where you have your anime phase where all of the popular stuff of the time is what you watched. I was into Naruto, Inuyasha, Full Metal Alchemist, all that stuff, um, and then. I, I had a very cold period where I just, I completely denied that part of me. Everything anime related was just weeb garbage. It was weeb shit. I wasn't interested. Whatever. And then, I guess, yeah, now's a good time to immortalize it on podcast so the yeah. story can never die. <laughs> then there was one time where I was like, you know, I like stuff that makes me cry. And I remember a friend of mine talking about an anime that made her cry a lot because she called me in the middle of the night, drunk off her ass, bawling her eyes salty? out about something I didn't understand. No, it was not salty. <laughs> um, so, chances are that's probably pretty sad. And so, yeah, I ended up watching Clan Ad with this friend of mine, and it changed everything. I got so attached to the characters, I loved the music, I cried my eyes out, and then I needed more. So I got home, I bought the visual novel, um, kicked myself in the shin because literally three days later, there it was on sale for $20, but whatever. <laughs> Beside the point, because that's what introduced me to Key as a whole, the visual novel medium, and uh, here I am hosting a podcast every week with a bunch of fucking like-minded idiots. So that's how much Clanad and by extension Air has, uh, has affected me, and... <laughs> Yeah, we kind of got off track because I was originally talking about yeah. that simple I fact love... being why I couldn't differentiate Sanai from Uraha for a while. So, I love yeah, your I story. Just, Thank you. I just was <laughs> kind of confused because you mentioned uh, getting into air first, but still uh, reminding you of another voice from another key thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's that tangent. Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, other other key things, um, what Ua, Uaha reminded me of, what character, um, in hindsight I was actually thinking it's the voice as well, but no, it's just the character, was uh, Nichi Kucho from Rewrite. I felt they acted kinda similar, serious but also kinda clingy, clingy and um, very... Um, kind but also serious very similar yeah 
Speaking of other key stuff, I love how in your story you said, because Little Busters is the other big one, completely ignoring rewrite. Alright, so... <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <laughs> it's not that I was ignoring rewrite. I was just ignoring rewrite because uh, I knew that it was the only key work that wasn't a sad key work. And when you're coming off of yeah. something like Clanad and you want more stuff like Clanad, a rewrite is not what you go for. <laughs> you go for literally anything else key is done. So Little Busters was didn't. the other big one because within that category, rewrite did not exist. So guys, how's summer? I don't know. Magus is the only one living it. I mean, it's okay. It could be best. It could be better. Oh dear. Well, I mean, I guess <laughs> the last bit we could cover is just the next section where we find mm -hmm. Uro, uh, Uro, I almost said Uroha's mom. <laughs> Kana's mom. I have a question. What? Have we have we mentioned how amazing that chicken is? No, and I was just about to get to that. I was gonna say, however, well, I'm glad. Shout out to that monstrous child's face and the scene with the chicken. <laughs> yes, the scene with the chicken, best scene in the entire game. Look, I just want to say, fish out of water trip, love it. Kana out of water, the way that she addresses that chicken, she's like, I'm gonna pluck your, pluck your feathers out, thou dost, thou dost shame me, chicken. Shall I, I drool you, chicken? It's amazing. I have I never it. seen an uglier bird nice. in my life. Exactly. I, like I love the description it. that uh, there's retarded girl and then there's taking it too far. That's basically what he said. It's, yeah, it's amazing. Fish out of water tropes, guys. Get on it. One of the cutest damn tropes you could ever imagine. But other than that, <laughs> there's nothing really noteworthy to talk about. I mean, aside from that I fish mean, out of water trope and the whole feeling of mysticism seeing that festival and having Kana realize wait a minute not only do other people exist but they can have fun too well it's not just about like having fun it's about it's about family um yeah I mean the whole point of this route is to watch these three characters who you know uh like at the start Ryuya and Kana kind of have a weird relationship it kind of turns to a loving one uh and then and then Ryuya switches to Anyway, we'll get to that when we get to it, but, like, we, we watch these three characters with these complicated relationships and these, like, sad backstories of, like, being imprisoned and having a harsh life, you know, uh, we, we see these people who are human, winged one, and, I don't know, demon, maybe. Oh, so, sorry, this is totally unrelated, but I wanted to look something up. Uh, for the voice, the other voice actors, um, Kana hasn't been in anything else any of us would know. However, shout out to Ryuya, or better known as Lancer from Fate Stay Night and Masato oh, Inahara boy. from Little Busters. Oh boy! Yes, boy. Yeah. They don't even sound Good alike. Idea. That's freaking yeah. loud. Wait, what? Uh, Lancer and Masato are the same? Yeah, and they're <laughs> the same as Ryuya. My my my. my my life yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah the like journey that they go on from like <laughs> barely knowing each other like, yeah, shut strangers. up anyways <laughs> basically strangers to you know lifelong companions by the end dedicating a thousand years of torment to each other uh like that process is detailed in their journey so like uh when we are uh, like swears on his honor, which is an important thing in Japan, to not kill anyone, because kinda like tells him not to. Um and there's the whole like funny kinda is an idiot. Like and then the festival scene where she realizes that people can be happy. And I think that that's something that's really important. All of these characters realize that there's something more to life than just, you know, doing what society tells them to, just like going along to whatever. They realize that with this uh, this this band, this family of people, they can find purpose, um, and that's something that they all kind of find by the end of the route. Um, and I mean, I suppose you could you could take that as one of the messages you could get from Summer. I would, yeah. 
Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't here for the that that point. I was distracted at the time, but yeah, that's like the message that is kind of core to the route. I would say that family is important, and it's like it's it's a bit of a cliche. Like uh, I joked during my my like read through that it was kind of like a Disney movie with like you can find a family wherever you look, and then it's like a group of monsters or a group of school children or whatever. But like I think that Summer takes that trope and plays it completely straight. Uh, does it in a really interesting way i'm sorry now um, now i yeah. can only think of ryuya and all of them going through the woods and they him and uraha turn to kana and they're just like you got a friend in me <laughs> yeah i mean it's basically that but key instead of disney or pixar whatever um yeah like that's that's literally what the summer route is it's the disney route or the pixar route of uh of air which is cool i like it i like it a lot except for butt touching more you about that got stream. a friend and in the house. Oh, yeah, the that the that thing. I got from Summer Route was that it does not matter who you bang as long as you have children. That's also true. I mean, we back in the day, that. that was pretty much the thing. Highly yeah, it's, that's a yeah. that's a cultural thing. Uh, yeah, it's it's so very Japanese that a character ends up bearing a child because they are honor bound and duty bound to do so. Like, that's such a Japanese thing. It's insane. Um, and you can kind of twist that to be like, what? I said, I said you called uh, him having a child with Oraha like 40 seconds before it actually happened. It's, it's what I do. <laughs> it's what I do. I call shit out. Um, yeah, like, I think you could try and, like, twist it to be like, oh, well, it's about the familiar bond that he has with Oraha, and that's why they're willing to, like, sacrifice. I'm like, great, but, but it, it also very much ties into those, like, ancient Japanese roots of, like, um, like how, you know, the samurai, if they dishonor themselves, they kill themselves, you know, like, that's the end. Like, it's something we, we meme a lot about, like, I would not commit Sudoku, but, like, it's a real thing. It's a real, like, historical, cultural thing, like an Asian thing. Um, did you just say that you're going to commit Sudoku? I did, yes. Uh, if I dishonor Rini, I have to commit Sudoku for, like, three <laughs> hours. Um, but yeah, like, I... I like those aspects of the route. I really like that there's this strong focus on honor and duty because it is very Japanese. Um, just I think we'll ever get an explanation of like what diamond is or like why that weird mirror turned into water. And I don't care. I don't think that's important. Um, it's not. Yeah, and I think that's cool. I like I that. I say glaring at corrupted. Oh god damn it! <laughs> I mean, I mean, look. I'm, I'm dying on the still. I don't think it's important. I don't think it matters. And I think that that's cool because that's like so into Japan. That's that's like the total opposite of like a chemical like like Western like Western practices with like this is exactly how magic works and this is how we understand the rules and these are the magic words and you try and like science it out. That's not what like ancient magic is. Um, this isn't exclusive to like Asian mythology, but I think that that's. That's very much the vibe they're going for, like the Shinto, the Buddhist, the pagan, um, where it, it doesn't have to make 100% sense, you just have to believe. I'm anyway. glad those monks died, though. Freaking bastards. Yeah, they were okay. dying, though. They had awful, well, like, evil voices. Still to stick around for a lot longer. You're just saying that because you think she's hot. What? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, that was the wrong tone of voice. I mean, what? <laughs> was the uh, tone of voice <laughs> so just really quick our lad Aizen is here how you doing buddy glad you could join us we're still in the thick of it cool thick. <laughs> cool um so I mean we're, we're not so far in if you have anything to say about how you felt about the atmosphere of summer or Kana or Uraha or any of the characters you could totally go. Uh, it's very different. Well said. Bravo. <laughs> A game changer. <laughs> so that's it. Just it's different. That's all you got so far. Well, is, is it different? Good. Well, it's oh, a different. Well. It's a different sort of story. Uh, 
I'm not exactly sure how I'm not exa exactly sure how to describe my feelings on it. I mean, it's a good story. It's just uh, I'll have to gather my thoughts on it for a little bit here. No problem. I just got home, and it's very my mind's still on other things, so. I'll, I'll get back to you on that. No worries, you've just got to go to classical Japan. Your mind needs to take a while to get there. Alright, well, Mags, did you uh, did you want to carry on where you were at? Keep on ranting about how much I enjoyed it? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I suppose... I don't know, it's, it's one of those things where, like, I think I can understand where Aizen uh, is going to lead into, so maybe I can help a little bit. Where, um... Like, as much of what I've said so far, like, I like this, I like that, I liked how weird it was, and, like, how it, it, it didn't really have, like, a proper conclusion, which is something that I always appreciate in media. Uh, I don't I don't necessarily like it when things are tied up in a, in a neat little bow like that. Um, I think that... Uh, let me think. How, how am I going to express this? Uh, the, like, there are some parts of the story that seem to happen far too quickly. Uh... For example, later in the story, which I guess we're going to probably lead into the discussion of now, uh, when we meet Kana's mother, and she doesn't get a name, and her mother doesn't really do much, she just expresses regret, uh, and then blows a bunch of people up, and then she dies. And it's a sad scene, right? It's effective, but it takes all of, like, ten minutes. Um, I don't know, like, I feel... I feel like some parts of the story rush past a bit too quick for their own good. Like, I feel like we could have sat in in the in the atmosphere and in the time like the time period. I I suppose. Um Like if we yeah, if we take her mom's death into account I will admit mm. that was that was a pretty quick scene. You yeah, know? Like I mean, it, and I, I feel like maybe they were sort of going for that quick shock impact because I mean, yeah. she almost literally dies as soon as she lives. Yep. yep, she steps out of the cage and then she gets shot, which is really cool as like a story thing. But but what kind of character were you? I wanted to yeah, like. I don't even know what your name is, you know? Like, I find it difficult... I, I found it difficult in that moment to really care about her mother dying. Because I didn't know who she was. Um, like, I cared about Kana's attempts to juggle, which is nice. That was yeah, cute, well, I think like, that's what they were going for. Because obviously, yeah. you don't have any attachment to the mom whatsoever. Yeah, so, yeah. her dying, I don't think is supposed supposed to hit sure. people very hard sure. it's Kana's absolute destruction afterward that yeah, supposed yeah, yeah. To... Um, which then leads into her exploding which is great uh, yeah like I, I don't know it's one of things where, like I, I enjoy all the plot points I'm like these are cool but I would have liked a little bit more time spent on each I suppose um, that said we do spend a lot of time chasing through the woods which is also fun but yeah I, I guess you could say that it's um it quick fires from scene to scene. Like, it doesn't waste your time, which is good. But, yeah, I... I don't know. It, I, I'm not sure is the problem. The problem. I'm trying to, like, formulate what it is that keeps me from saying, this is amazing, but I think it, like, it's not the final route. I know there's more to this story. I'm still, like, expecting something else. I, like, when I was uh, following the story along, I enjoyed it, and I had, like, what if there's this big twist? What if there's that big twist? But there wasn't like a big moment of like I was not expecting this. This is this is crazy shit. Uh, except maybe when she explodes, the exploding part was pretty great. <laughs> but like I don't know, I, I was expecting like some some big moment to point to and be like this was this was where like I, I understood air or whatever. Like there wasn't really a moment like that. There wasn't. Uh, there wasn't a boys don't cry moment, you know, that sort of thing. But we're not in the, the finale quite yet. So maybe my expectations were a little bit high. I don't know. Yeah, I, the air route is definitely the finale route. Like, not just because it's the last one, but Misuzu is supposed to 
provide the pretext yeah it's supposed to yeah. build up summer is supposed to give you the answers and air takes those answers applies them to the pretext and solves the equation i mean that's what i'm expecting uh i don't know i agree with you it's all about that i am I guess I'm just I'm just I'm just excited to, to finish the story, you know. I'm I'm well, I'm interested at least. I'm interested to see like how does this all end. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I mean um, that's I think that's because of the way they structured it. Because yeah, going back to the analogy I just made, summer gives you all the answers. It's just you you don't have the questions yet. Hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a bridge arc. Like that's yeah. that's its function. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I'm curious if anyone else, like, I don't know. Uh, who, who else is, like, excited for air? Like, did you all get pumped up? You're like, Me. man. Actually, Actually, I'm, I'm very curious, but I wouldn't say I'm hyped for it. See, I was yeah. hyped for air, but it wasn't Summer that made me hyped for air. You know, Summer gave me all those, again, answers but I wasn't looking forward to air because of summer. I was looking forward to air because I was hooked on the Misuzu route and I was like, all right, now we have all this extra information. Boy, do I want to know how this changes anything. I agree. I agree very much. I guess I got more from it because I felt like uh, summer gave fuel to my imagination for how the world works because I started seeing how the relationship between the three characters in Summer is mirrored in all the relationships you saw in the previous three routes. So maybe in the fact that she's like, it's a dream before she disappears, the fact that she's living an infinite dream in Summer, and I was like, oh, everything's a dream, or everything's a dream and not a dream, it's all starting to come together. I see the tropes and the patterns between the first three, you know, the mother-child relationship. The right. relationship between Kana and the main character... Like, you, you see that between Misuzu and the main character in the first routes. And the whole mother-daughter thing, you see it all the time. Well, then here's what I want to ask next. And Magus, this is this is your last moment for air. Uh -oh. So now... Uh -oh. So, again, we go back to my analogy. We've got the answers, but we don't have all the questions. So, here's your last time. What do you think... The air route is gonna be. I asked you this at the end of the Misuzu route. Now that you've done summer, what do you think the air route is gonna be? Uh, you say that like it's gonna be some big old deal. I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I haven't really had enough time to put like go over the the fucking tomes for this one. <laughs> uh, so I I don't know. Like, I'm expecting. That we will probably see Masuzu again, and we'll hang out with her, and we'll probably like talk to Kana through Masuzu somehow. Uh, I hope that we get to go to the spirit world at some point. That'd be fun. Like I don't know. I I think there are two ways that we can start air out. It could either be one that we go back to the moment when uh, Magus or Magus Sun was sucked into the doll and continue straight from there. Um, the other option I is like you named him after yourself. I totally did. Yeah, the only sad part about Summer was that I had to be fucking Ryuyu. Get out of here, Ryuyu. No one likes you. Bring back Magus. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like we could we could just jump back to that moment of like we were sucked into the doll and now we're out of the doll and we we understand everything. Um, we could also get shunted back to like before. Everything like went to shit. That that'll be a fun like a fun little slide into to air. Um I don't know, like we could just straight up jump into the spirit world, you know, like now you are standing in front of Kana and kinda looks at you and is like, I am very sad. Please bring me good memories. Doth thine would be sad really doth. Yes. Uh I would not be surprised if we get a scene like that. She'll look at um Misuzu's shirt and be like that is the ugliest stegosaurus i've ever seen <laughs> damn right, damn right. um yeah i mean uh i'd be pretty excited for that uh the other possibility i guess is that we switch perspective again which is entirely possible to like maybe suzu's efforts to like fix shit 
because maybe like by inhabiting the doll and using her jitsu, uh, God Magus is able. I've already, I've actually forgotten his real name. So Magus Yukito, uh, Yukito, whatever. Uh, Magus is able to use her jitsu to like. I mean, I said back in the day that he'd use it to like fly through the sky, but he might also use it to like unlock Masusu's ancient memories. <laughs> so maybe we're like. No, I'm just hmm. imagining Yukito sitting here like, hmm. I can make this thing fly. Maybe yes. I can make myself fly. I mean, why wouldn't he? That'd be the first thing I'd try. He's just um, floating through the air, just pointing at himself with a really focused I, face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want that to happen. So stupid, um, and I love it. <laughs> it would be the best scene. Uh, but yeah, like we, we've we've we kind of had this whole thing where Hujitsu's like full uh, kind of abilities were revealed, right? Where like it's not just being able to move things; it's also the power to connect with the spirit world and like see what Kana's doing, like this kind of uh, visionary or, or um, divination type kind of magic. We we were also folks on how memories are passed down. So uh, I've actually seen stuff like this in a novel called Dune, which I'm sure I've mentioned on a podcast before, where there are characters who use like a trance to unlock the memories of their ancient ancestors through the genetic code of their bodies which is a very Western way of dealing with this sort of thing. But I imagine that we, it, it's entirely possible that we will have a scene where like, um, Magus uses, uses Sojitsu to like, unlock Masuzu's mind, right? So she can remember Kana, she remembers either being Kana, like, she, cause she's like reincarnation or whatever, or she just remembers like, oh, this is why Kana is so sad. This is how we fix it. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if we switch protagonists again and we were like, were Masuzu. Uh, I think that'd be pretty fun. Um, Nothing like first-hand experiencing the drunken abuse of Haruko. Yeah, I mean, I think it would make for an interesting change. I think it would also be really cool because we get to like see her uh, her full thought process. So I am very much imagine that like the first five minutes of her being all scatterbrained and then Magus is like, here you go, and he touches her on the forehead, there's a little like, bright light, and she like remembers who she is. You she know? is the Stegosaurus. Um, yeah, exactly. She is the Kanosaurus. Uh, yeah, I think that would be really cool. I don't know, like, I, I don't know. I don't have, like, a grand theory of, like, this is how it's all going to end. Because I feel like it, I feel like it'll be straightforward enough. Like, we got to fix Kana. How do we do that? How do we make her stop being so sad? Um, and I think, I think following uh, these two characters and the quest, you know, to to save the girl in the sky will be reflective of the journey that Uraha and Yuyu went on uh, to protect and then to to contact Kana. Um, so yeah, I think it'll be a fun time. All right. Well, we've got that to look forward to. Um, in that case, doth anyone have any final thoughts on the summer route to offer up? Yeah. Wait, yeah, I mean, we we covered most of the events before your arrival. Uh, I mean, if you have any thoughts to add, by all means. I mean, it's, it's a good route. That's pretty much all I have to say about it. <laughs> Fair enough. Tidu, you have something to say? Um, if Ivan doesn't have uh, more to say, um, pretty much uh, a few things. Um, my thoughts about uh, Tom and Air together um if what i think it will be pretty sad even if we can save kana in some way or form well ryuya and uraha will not be there anymore unless we save her in the past kind of way but timeline Dude. timeline mambo jumbo would be very weird hold on I think that's gonna be you know what they're gonna do it's gonna be a moment where uraha and ryuyu take over Magus and Masusu's bodies, and they live out a moment with each other. I'm just saying, just saying. On the other okay. hand, the, the puppet apparently can turn back time, so it might be a thing, but I don't think so. That can be pretty Dude, good. You know what um, it is? Yeah. Hold on. I said a thought. So, not turning back time, but the capacity to unlock memories. Uh, what if? As Magus inhabits the puppet and makes it walk around, 
Ryuyu inhabits Magus. Oh my god, that'd be the best scene. I hope that happens. Anyway, is this like, I really this like, like the Animus from Assassin's Creed? I guess so. I guess so. Same sort of trope. Look, if there's a scene where Uraha and like right at the end of the magic, right at the end where they're like doing the big like magic thing, Uraha and Ryu take over their their like descendants' bodies to like do their final duty to to Kana. God, that would be a great scene. Oh, I want that so bad. They're like, it's been so long. This isn't really us. We can't do anything. And like, it's been a long to... time, master. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Look, straight up. I've seen scenes like that that are really powerful and awesome. Me I think too. that would be great. And they hurt. We're good, though. <laughs> um, they are good. They're very good. Now I want to go fucking read Children of June again. Everybody go read June. It's good. It's a good book. Everybody read Lucy, the eternity she wished for. Yes. Oh, oh my. Magus, I wonder. Uh, I'm uh, surprised you didn't plug something else, but uh, I already what? plugged him in Echo for him. No, he, he oh. has to make all the listeners read Lucy because it's been on the front of the channel for like three years. It has. It has. That's sure. wait. No, we have. <laughs> I took it seriously for a second. I was like, wait, wasn't it just the one year anniversary yesterday? <laughs> I also hate that uh, I know that there will be choices. I think uh, in the final route, there could yes. just be no choices. The air route is not kinetic. There are choices. Yeah. yeah. I mean, one or two Ooh. would be fine, but I think it's more... No, it's not all that much. Like, get a good end or get a bad end, but it, I think it's... All right. Well, if that's that, then that's that. We are now officially on the final gauntlet of air. Yay! Yay! I'm hoping. I'm hoping some of you lads cry. In fact, I'm hoping all of you lads cry. Yeah, we'll see. You. I know hey, Magus is a black-hearted monster, but the rest of you. <laughs> yeah, are. I don't care. Cute girls who needs them. <laughs> That's not true. I love you, girls. I'm gonna say, it's <laughs> <Please, please> <laughs> and a charm. All right. Well, uh, this has been another episode of the Kiniku Sensation Podcast. So this is uh, where everybody shouts bye in various ways, and then we'll see you next week for Komine Sachi in Fruit of Grisai. Oh boy! How dare a Ronnie such as thyself tell me to say bye? Hi. I'll say it. Yeah. Bye. Th <laughs> thanks, Rio bye, and Magus, everyone. for not being awful. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome, sir. All right. Yeah. Now, if it gets too much, we'll see y'all ugly little chickens later.